Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. This is Brian Jacobs, Senior Product Manager for the What's Up Gold family of network management products. We're happy today to talk to you about using What's Up Gold version 16 to develop a methodology for managing wireless networks. So just to give everyone a little bit of background of, of my story, um, I've only been with Ipswich about two and a half years. Um, prior to that, uh, I was most recently the chief architect, architect excuse me, um, for one of the largest providers of hotel broadband and video services. And part of that job, a large part of that job, was managing and maintaining the wireless networks at various hotels. And some of the things that we learned um, while doing that uh, was that there is a big opportunity for people to increase their visibility and use network management systems uh, to help manage those wireless networks. So when I came to, uh, to Ipswich a couple of years ago, we started looking at building software uh, that would help you do just that. Uh, and so we're happy to uh, introduce with What's Up Gold version 16 Premium Edition, uh, integrated wireless management functionality that's going to provide uh, a, a real uh, in-depth visibility into your wireless infrastructure. So in a recent Gartner study this year, they identified that 80% of the recently installed corporate wireless networks will become obsolete by 2015. And if we think backwards uh, to when wireless first came out with 802.11a and then b and then g, uh, every five or six years or so, uh, there is a technology leap in the wireless technology. And so um, the wireless networks that we have today are not going to be the wireless networks that we have tomorrow. Now, most of these wireless networks were originally designed for convenience, for the few people who had laptops, and, and there was no such thing as tablets and smartphones. However, in today's IT ecosystem, the wireless network is evolving into the primary user network. We drag our laptops to meetings, we have tablets and smartphones and things that help us do work, and primarily those use the wireless network in order to connect. Now, wireless is a complex infrastructure to plan for and manage. It's much more complex than a wired network. And there's a bunch of reasons why. The bring your own device trend, or BYOD, is drastically increasing network density of wireless networks. So for example, um, several years ago, our wireless uh, network here at Ipswich had a DHCP server that had you know, 100 or so IP addresses, and that was just fine. We never had problems. However, today, everyone's bringing their own equipment and attaching them to the corporate network. And so we've actually had to increase our network capacity and the number of IP addresses available to to our wireless network just to uh, match that increase in demand. Certainly with more wireless clients, that means there's more wireless bandwidth that is being consumed. And so we need to be able to measure that bandwidth consumption per client and per infrastructure device so that we can understand where that bandwidth's going and if there are any usage policy violations. Another thing that I've seen is that in many cases, IT managers uh, may be experts in networking or systems, but most of us don't have a real strong depth of understanding of RF or radio frequency, which is what uh, wireless networks use. And so because of that, in many cases, we just kind of haphazard a guess as to where in the ceiling we're going to place our access points, and, and we hope for the best. However, we really need to understand if your access points have poor signal strength, which could introduce interruption in service, as well as oversubscription, so decreased availability of wired networks, or excuse me, wireless networks uh, for your wireless clients. And then certainly we have to be aware of rogue devices, which expose you to security risks or your clients to security risks. Uh, and so it's very important to be able to track and manage those over time. And I will jump into defining what a rogue is and how that works uh, here in just a little bit. So there's a big impact of wireless networks on network managers. As an IT manager, you're going to need to be able to formulate and enforce wireless usage policies so um, that we can guarantee that our wireless networks are being used appropriately. We need to be able to rapidly visualize, isolate, and resolve wireless availability and performance problems. And we need to be able to address wireless problems before they impact your users, customers, and your business operations. So there are three real components to wireless management. First, 
we need to be able to manage your wireless resource consumption so we understand where all of your wireless resources are consumed, where there may be pain points and opportunities uh, to optimize that configuration. You also need to be able to track your wireless devices. Um, most most um, network management systems simply gather syslog messages, and while uh, technically that may give you the ability uh, to track wireless clients, in actuality what that means is that you have to go through syslog messages and reassemble sessions just to understand what happened. And in most cases, the burden of effort there is more than most people are willing to utilize, and so we end up uh, losing a lot of intelligence uh, that is available to us because we don't have the tools to assemble it correctly. And finally, we need to secure your wireless clients from rogue devices, which once again I will explain here in just a little bit. So the first part is managing your resource consumption. The challenge here, especially with BYOD, is that your employees are bringing their own tablets and smartphones and connecting to your network. This does three things. First, it increases your network density. You have more devices that you have to deal with. Secondly, it increases the load on your support staff. So when my tablet's not working or uh, my smartphone's not connecting and stuff like that, I'm likely to call my IT administrator and ask for help. And finally, there's an increased security risk for bring your own devices. So if I bring my tablet to work and I attach it to a corporate financial server, I may have latent data on there uh, that then if I lose my iPad or if someone steals it, all of a sudden the corporation's information is now available to people outside the corporation. So what you need to be able to do is formulate and enforce cost-effective bring-your-own-device policies. We need to understand how many devices is each user bringing and which users are bringing in those devices. Are they a type that we allow on the corporate network or not? And what networks do we allow these BYOD devices to access? So we're going to switch over here to just a minute and look at the, one of the out-of-the-box dashboards that comes with What's Up Gold version 16. This is our what we call our wireless high def or our wireless HD dashboard that gives me a wealth of information about the wireless infrastructure here on the Ipswich campus. Up here on the top left, I have a wireless system summary where I can understand the basic counts about what's going on in my wireless network, how many wireless LAN controllers and access points, wireless networks uh, are present and how many rogues we're detecting, the average uh, received signal strength and signal to noise uh, aggregate across my entire wireless network. Now you'll notice here there is a zero in this column. I'm on an older version that has a slight bug. It's been corrected in the released version of What's Up Gold version 16, but of importance is to understand how many wireless clients we have on our network. I also want to understand my wireless bandwidth consumption, both at a gross level, which is over here on the left, where I can see the aggregate transmit and receive rates across my entire wireless infrastructure, as well as the clients who are consuming the most bandwidth and who have consumed the most traffic. So bandwidth consumption means who's sending and receiving the fastest right now, and traffic over the last six hours is who has sent the largest aggregate of bytes over the last six hours just below that, we have a listing of how many rogues each wireless access point is seeing. Over on the far right, we'll go to this column. I can see right now this is by wireless network, so we have four or five here, Ipswich Mobile, Ipswich Guest, and Ipswich Employee. And now it's very easy for me to understand how many wireless clients are attached to each network over time. So as you can see, everyone starts to get to work here at Ipswich just a little before 8 a.m., and we seem to peak right around noon. Um, but this lets me understand the relative weight of clients on each wireless network. As I hover over these, I can see that we have 13 guests throughout the Ipswich Enterprise campuses. We have 29 mobile devices, and we have 142 Ipswich employees that are attached to our wireless network. So now I have complete visibility into understanding which wireless networks are being uh, consumed. Uh, down here on the bottom right, we have the list of wireless clients per access point, so that it's very easy for me to understand which of my access points have the most dense uh, distribution of clients. And then just below that, similarly, we have the wireless signal strength, so I can look and see what the average signal strength is for all my wireless uh, access points. My favorite graph on this page, however, is the one in the middle, which is my client bandwidth consumption. 
So I can come in here and look and see exactly which clients were actually chewing up most of that bandwidth. So it's very easy for me to come in here and see that we had a guest that was attached who was consuming 15 megabits of uh, wireless bandwidth, which is actually quite a lot. Um, I will be able to go in in just a little bit, and I'll show you how we can track that guest and see exactly where they've been attached and what they've been doing. The important thing to understand here is that you need to be able to build a dashboard that shows you the type of information uh, that you need to see. Now, all of these dashboards in WhatsApp Gold are user configurable. I can drag things around. I can add content to build the dashboard that makes the most sense to you. So we'll switch back over here to the presentation. There we go. So going back, since we're talking about bandwidth, we'll go ahead with that. Um, a challenge for managing your bandwidth consumption is that authorized business critical applications are consuming more and more bandwidth. That means we have to make more of it available. And when we have users who are accessing unauthorized high bandwidth applications, such as Pandora or YouTube, that can make it difficult for our legitimate applications uh, to have the bandwidth available to them because somebody is using that limited wireless bandwidth uh, for other purposes. So we need to be able to formulate and enforce bandwidth usage policies and accurately size wireless network capacity. So we're going to jump back over to the demo. And uh, like I said, this is just a very static dashboard, but some of the real power in uh, What's Up Gold version 16 Premium Edition's wireless management is the ability to start drilling into uh, the performance, the historical performance of my wireless network. So right now, I've switched over to our wireless performance tab, which lets me go back historically and understand exactly what was happening. And I'll just walk very quickly uh, through what we're seeing here on the screen. In the first graph, this is an aggregate view for yesterday, for Wednesday, of all of my clients across all of my access points here at Ipswich. So it's very easy for me to see that my NM sales access point was essentially the busiest one yesterday. We had, on average, it looks like about 37, 35 clients attached. My second busiest one was my network management marketing access point with about 30 clients. So it's really easy for me to understand where the density of my clients have been throughout the day. This is a pretty even distribution, uh, which means that our IT department has has done a pretty good job of placing those access points in the optimal locations. However, you can use this information to determine if you have access points that may have opportunities to be relocated for better performance. So for example, my access point down here, this gray line, uh, let's see what that is. That is the access point here in the Atlanta office main hall. He has a relatively small number of clients attached to him, which may indicate that he's in an area of the building uh, that may not be optimal for what he's trying to accomplish. Over here on the right, uh, I am looking at uh, the bandwidth consumption per access point. So I can look at this graph and immediately tell which access points are consuming the most bandwidth throughout the day. So it's very easy for me to see that there was a pretty significant demand on my central finance access point in our headquarters office there in Boston. This can indicate that I may need to ensure that the network linked to that access point has sufficient resources to uh, sustain the bandwidth uh, that the wireless clients are demanding. Now, one of the great things about the way that we present reports in this um, wireless uh, dashboard here is the ability to change the way that we are viewing the data. So up here at the top right now, we have group by access point. However, you may be more interested in understanding which wireless networks were consuming the bandwidth. So by changing the group by, I can now understand that the Ipswich employee, uh, and I'm sorry, I was talking about client count, will do the same thing over here for bandwidth. So I can change to SSID, and now I can see that Ipswich employee was the uh, wireless network that was consuming the most bandwidth. That's what I would expect uh, here in a corporate office. But it also helps me understand that Ipswich Mobile was consuming almost a megabit of traffic uh, just yesterday, uh, a little bit afternoon. So somebody had a very hungry mobile device uh, that was consuming my bandwidth. And understanding the difference between BYOD devices and uh, corporate devices can help me ensure that I'm allocating my bandwidth to the correct group of devices. One of the other great things uh, about What's Up Gold version 16's wireless management support is the ability to visualize your wireless infrastructure. 
So I switched over to the map tab, and what we're looking at here, in, and I'm, uh, up here in the top right, we see Atlanta, and here in the middle, uh, we see Boston. So this lets me get a very instantaneous visual representation of um, where my wireless clients are in the network, both from a physical relationship, so I can see to which access point these clients are attached, but also logical relationships as well. So I can see which wireless LAN controller is managing this access point, and I can see which wireless networks these clients are attached. So as I zoom in, we can now see actual usernames uh, that are associated with these clients. So for example, I can see that uh, the Johnny Ward's laptop is right here, and if I click this guy, I'm going to get a pop-up that tells me relevant information about his particular connection. So for example, I picked a random, a random laptop here and I can see how long they've been connected. I can see to which network they are attached. Over the lifetime of their session, which has been 47 minutes, I can see their average signal strength and signal to noise ratio. I can see their transmit and receive rates as well as their total aggregate amount of traffic that they have sent and received over the lifetime of that session. In addition, I can click an infrastructure device such as an access point and I get a similar pop-up that gives me relevant details about that particular access point, including things like location and software version and uh, things like that. So it can really help me investigate exactly how my infrastructure devices are performing right from the wireless map. It behaves just like a Google map where I can grab and drag around or zoom in or zoom out uh, in order to drill into the information that I need. So, as I mentioned before, managing your infrastructure design is a real challenge um, for, for IT managers. Um, we don't know everything about RF, and so designing your wireless infrastructure for optimal availability and performance, where we have consistently strong access point signal strength and eliminate access point over subscription. We also need to ensure that our access points are performing uh, as well as we need them to. So the requirements here are to be able to deploy access points for consistent, predictable availability and performance, and quickly visualize, isolate, and resolve access point performance problems. So before, before I go back to the demo, I'll tell you a little story. When I was working at my former employer with lots and lots and lots of access points, there are two things that we learned. One was, when an access point is poorly positioned, you're going to see that his average signal strength is, uh, is much lower than those of his peers. Um, so we can kind of investigate and see um, how access points are performing relative to other access points to identify when we have access points that may be placed in a poor position. So for example, uh, right here I'm looking at uh, the graphs of our historical performance for yesterday um, for my received signal strength and for my signal to noise ratio. And it's very easy for me to identify that there seems to be an underperforming access point right here. If I hover over the line, I can see that this is a Cisco 1262 that's in our lab. So, so that's actually okay, right, because it's a lab device. But if it was a production device, that may indicate that it's in a poor location, for example, um, behind an elevator or a lift shaft or near a water main or near a fluorescent light, something that generates uh, RF interference. The same is also true for received signal strength, right? I can tell that this access point right here is performing much poorly, uh, much more poorly than, than his, uh, his brethren. Uh, we can see once again that's a lab access point, so I'm not too worried about it, um, but that can help me identify when I have access points in a poor location. The other thing that we learned is that usually on RF components like access points, before they actually die, they indicate, they give, uh, there are, are, are indicators that, that the, the equipment is failing. Specifically, we saw a very obvious degradation of signal to noise ratio and receive signal strength uh, about two weeks before those devices actually died. So when we have a network management system that can track that historical performance over time, then we can understand and have it alert us when there are problems. So for example, um, you, you guys probably aren't going to spend most of your time watching these graphs, right? You need WhatsApp Gold to 
alert you when there's a problem. So what's up gold version 16? Contains many out of the box thresholds that will indicate when there are problems. Since we're talking about performance, we'll jump right into those performance ones. We have wireless point uh, access point over subscription. So that's when you have too many clients attached to your access points. Now the nature of wireless associations when a client attaches to an access point is once a second that access point sends a beacon. Uh, to your wireless uh, uh, client device, and then he responds back. So the more beacons or the more clients you have attached, the more time the wireless radio and the access point is spent servicing those beacons and maintaining those associations uh, instead of sending payload data uh, that your clients actually are trying to use. So there's an inverse relationship between the number of clients and the performance of your access point. And there becomes a tipping point uh, where there's just too many clients and uh, the signal, or excuse me, the performance of that access point begins to degrade. WhatsApp Gold can recognize when you have a problem and actually let you know uh, so that you can consider uh, repositioning or adding additional wireless resources. Similarly, with access point receive signal strength, uh, as I mentioned, when you have uh, an access point that's poorly located and so has a very low uh, average signal strength, or when it has an impending failure, um, and we need to be able to be notified of that, WhatsApp Gold can let you know uh, as that begins to happen. Now, another thing that's very important uh, with your wireless infrastructure management is being able to track your wireless clients. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, most of the way that people do that is through syslog messages, and we just hope and pray that we never actually have to go through and, uh, and reconstruct those. However, um, with What's Up Gold version 16, we actually assemble client session information so that you can come in and actually understand who's attached to your wireless networks over time. So, for example, I will just um, I'll pick somebody at random. Let's do um, uh, Rosa Foley. Rosa Foley is one of our uh, she's our webmaster. So I can come in and now search for and see yesterday Wednesday when Rosa Foley actually attached to our network. So we can look and see that Rosa came to work yesterday at 9.22 a.m. She sat at her desk until about 10.50. Then it looks like she went to a meeting in the marketing area for about oh, uh, almost 30 minutes. And then she went back to her desk and sat at her desk until about 8.30 at night. So as you can tell, Rosa is a very dedicated worker uh, who stayed here quite late last night. But this gives me visibility into understanding who has been attaching to my wireless network. This obviously was attached to the Ipswich employee network that we see right here. However, uh, if we go back, and I'm going to refresh this page here, if we go back, we can limit this by the wireless network as well. So, for example, if I said Ipswich Mobile, uh, there we go, Ipswich Mobile, if I can make my keyboard work, there we go. And now I can look and see all of the BYOD devices, all of the, um, the employee-owned devices that have attached to our wireless network. So I can understand, for example, that Eric Woodbury has two different BYOD devices that are attached to the mobile. I'd guess that one of them is a tablet and one of them is probably his smartphone. So by having that uh, record of accountability, you can guarantee that you have, uh, 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 are, are able to maintain compliance with certain governmental regulations and uh, things like PCI, Sarbanes-Oxley, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll go back to our presentation here, if I can find it. There we go. Very good. So rogues, rogue devices are very important to talk about. So a lot of people don't understand it, so I'm going to explain what rogues are. Uh, a rogue device, by definition, is a wireless infrastructure device that is observed by your wireless network but is not part of your wireless network. So let me give you an example. Here at Ipswich, we are, um, we are in a independent building. Um, and I go to join a wireless network, I see a huge list of the wireless networks that are visible to my laptop. However, most of, uh, most of those are, are, are not my, my corporation. They're my neighbors. Um, those aren't bad, necessarily, but they're, they're, they're rogues. From, from the perspective of my wireless network, those are guys that we see, but they're not part of us. They're the others. They're the bad guys. Um, and so it's very important to be able to track those rogues over time and alert when there are conditions for two or three reasons. 
first of all, um, let's let's um, I'll give you a use case here, and, and we'll we'll stick with picking on on uh, on uh, Rosa Foley. So I happen to know Rosa, and I know that she loves to collaborate. Uh, using her iPad. She really, really, really enjoys that. And so uh, here at Ipswich, we may have a corporate policy that says, oh, you can only attach your, uh, or excuse me, corporate-owned devices. You cannot bring uh, your, your iPad to work and, and, and uh, attach it to the network. There are security risks. There could be a virus. You might accidentally download something you shouldn't. Who knows? Uh, that's just a corporate policy, but that really, really, really frustrates Rosa. She really wants to bring uh, that iPad to work and, and, and use it to collaborate. So Rosa can go out to uh, Best Buy and buy a $50 access point and stick it under her desk and uh, uh, completely bypass our corporate uh, uh, usage policies. And she may go and say, you know what, I don't want anybody to know about this. I'm going to make it secure, and I'm going to make it secure by hiding the SSID. So nobody will actually see it. It's a hidden SSID, uh, and none's the wiser. However, truth be told, it's actually pretty easy to trick an access point into giving up that hidden SSID. So that is not a security uh, mechanism at all. Security by obfuscation, is, it doesn't work. <laughs> so um, that Rosa would have, in that theoretical circumstance, introduced uh, to the network a huge security hole. Now, anybody who is within radio distance of that access point now has a backdoor into our corporate network. That's a very, very, very dangerous thing. The other use case is suppose that I'm a nasty bad hacker and um, I want to trick some of your wireless clients to joining uh, a false network. I could pull up my hacker van out in the parking lot behind your building and with my own access point begin to broadcast um, your SSIDs, your laptops, your, your, your corporate laptops are, are in all likelihood not going to know the difference between the legitimate access point owned by the corporation and the uh, hacker access point out in the, um, out in the parking lot uh, that uh, is the nasty bad hacker who can uh, uh, intercept your information. So the laptop joins the wrong access point, and now this guy can uh, intercept mail, play man in the middle, look at passwords. You know, there's all kinds of badness that occurs um, when people join the wrong network. So you need a network management system that can help you isolate suspicious rogues from known rogues. Remember, not all rogues are bad. My neighbors are fine. And then receive alerts for those dangerous rogue conditions. So we're going to go back to our demo. And we're going to go over here now to the rogues tab, which looks very similar to the clients tab. This is a list. Of all, the wire, uh, of all the rogue access points that um, What's Up Gold version 16 saw yesterday uh, for these two access points that I have selected in our lab Aruba and in our network management technical support. So now I can look and see all kinds of relevant information. How long did we see the rogues? Um, which access point saw them? When they first appeared and disappeared? Uh, and things of that nature. So, um, for example, I can see that these guys are present all the time. All these rogues right here are, are always there. So I happen to know that Rain and Rain Guest and, and even these, uh, these guys that look like a funky guid um, are actually okay. They're my neighbors. They're there all the time. So I can teach What's Up Gold that, hey, those guys are okay. Don't treat them as rogues. And so the more time I spend teaching What's Up Gold about those rogues that are okay, then it becomes very obvious to me when I have rogues that might not be okay. Things like Linksys, right? Linksys to me says open access point that Rosa Foley just bought in the, uh, in the Best Buy and didn't configure it at all. So I would be very curious if I was a hacker to go and try to connect to that rogue and understand uh, what's there. So there again, we're not going to spend a lot of time staring at the screen. We need a network management system that will alert us when these dangerous conditions occur. So switching back over to our Alert Center Clearinghouse for alerts out of What's Up Gold, I can come down here and we'll go through some of the different ways that What's Up Gold can alert you to dangerous wireless rogue conditions. So recall, uh, first of all, 
the hidden SSID use case where an employee has installed an access point under their desk. What's Up Gold can detect that condition and alert you and let you know, hey, we've seen a hidden SSID broadcast in your airspace. Here's when we saw it. Here's when it disappeared. And here's the, the, the relative location of it. So we might say access point in the main hall saw it for three hours and access point in the uh, tech support area saw it for 15 minutes. And using that information, it kind of gives you a baseline for where to start looking for that rogue hidden access point. Once we've identified it, so we found that access point under Rose's desk, we can now go and actually program in the MAC address of that access point into What's Up Gold. So if it ever shows up again, either as a hidden SSID or as anything else, if we ever see that access point broadcasting in our airspace again, What's Up Gold can let you know when that occurs. We can also do the same thing for clients. So uh, many, many users may have um, access points that are in public spaces, right, in our lobby for our guests or uh, a library or a public school or, or a coffee shop, things of that nature. And we may have users who, who uh, we have asked not to join the network anymore. They have violated our policies. They downloaded some music, whatever it was. Um, and you can actually tell What's Up Gold, hey, if this device ever shows back up on my network, I need to receive an alert about it immediately so that you can uh, either automatically or manually address the problem uh, as soon as it occurs. We also talked about specific SSIDs. So what I always do with What's Up Gold um, version 16 when we install uh, or, or when we start to manage wireless devices is I put my own SSIDs in this threshold. So if somebody shows up and starts broadcasting Ipswich employee uh, in our airspace that's visible and it's not part of our network, then What's Up Gold will detect that and say, hey, it looks like that nasty hacker is out back uh, with the uh, hacker van trying to trick your laptops into joining the illegitimate network. I'm paraphrasing, of course. That's not actually how uh, the emails are uh, are uh, uh, constructed. Now certainly we also want to be able to uh, uh, alert when we have a rogue access point MAC address. Uh, right? So that's what I was referring to earlier where when Rosa pl plugs in that Linksys that we've asked her to take home that, uh, that we'll receive an alert about it immediately. Now one of the other things that we like to talk about, I showed you the wireless map right here where we can visualize our wireless infrastructure from a physical and logical perspective but just at the wireless network layer. What's Up Gold version 16 also includes um, integrated layer 2 functionality that was uh, uh, originally part of the What's Connected uh, product suite. And that gives you some really cool stuff. So um, it's, it's easiest to explain by example. So I'm going to create what we call a new layer 2 group. And now I'm, it's very easy for me to come in here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say uh, wireless infrastructure. There we go. And it's very easy for me to tell What's Up Gold to draw me a map of all of my wireless LAN controllers, access points, and switches. And now when I click OK right here, and I can adjust slightly how What's Up Gold renders these particular uh, devices, but now when I click OK and bring this up, What's Up Gold will show me a physical and logical representation of my wireless infrastructure. So now I'm looking at the, um, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can actually see it. But I'm looking at an automatic rendering of exactly how all of our wireless infrastructure devices are plugged in together. So for example, the green lines here represent actual network links. And if we look on the network links, we can actually see port-to-port -to -port topology. So What's Up Gold with What's Connected technology that's baked right in to all editions of What's Up Gold. I can look and, and under, What's Up Gold understands how this wireless LAN controller is plugged in to the switches and the access points as well. Now, the green lines are physical relationships, right, wired connections. The blue lines are logical relationships. So this indicates that these three access points are managed by this wireless LAN controller. So it's very easy for me to understand exactly the physical and logical relationships of my infrastructure devices, just like in the other map, we look at the physical and logical relationships of my wireless clients. 
So what we need to do with a network management system is be able to visualize exactly how our wireless network is constructed um, so that we can understand when there may be performance problems or outage problems uh, that will be impactful to your users. So uh, one other thing we'll show here that uh, I always like to talk about better together, I'm going to go back uh, to my uh, dashboard here. As I mentioned, this is a dashboard that, um, that comes right out of the box. But what, what I like to tell people is that I'm not going to know what type of cake you like. Um, but what I can do is try to stock the kitchen with all the utensils and ingredients for you to bake the type of cake uh, that you like. So we might call this uh, wireless investigation. Let's do that. We're going to build a new dashboard. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to come in and, uh, and add different area, or areas, uh, excuse me, dashboard elements from different functional areas of the product uh, in order to provide a wealth of information that you're just not going to find with other network management systems. So for example, I might be interested in my wireless bandwidth consumption, my wireless client count. Um, let's do a wireless bandwidth summary, uh, and that's probably pretty good. I guess we could do a, uh, a wireless system summary as well. So I've done that part, and then we're going to couple this with our Flow Monitor product. So what Flow Monitor does is actually allows you to understand exactly uh, the traffic that was going across the link. So for example, in, um, in the, the, the bandwidth graphs that we were looking at earlier, they showed you broken out by client or by access point or by wireless network where that, um, where that uh, uh, bandwidth, w which clients or access points were consuming that bandwidth, but it doesn't really tell us exactly how the bandwidth was being consumed. So when I start adding things like uh, top applications, um, let's say we could say uh, top protocols and uh, top senders and receivers, and I'll actually have to go through and configure a couple of these dashboard elements, but that's okay. Everything in What's Up Gold is drag and drop, so it's very easy for me to put all my flow data over here on the right. I can move my bandwidth up here and have my system summaries um, just below it. There we go, and then I'll go in here, and we will point these guys at my uh, wireless network interface, if I can, uh, there we go, internal wireless traffic, and we'll do the same for my top senders as well. And now, what I will be able to do is look at my wireless bandwidth and understand exactly uh, which clients were consuming that wireless bandwidth, and then I can correlate it with exactly what they were doing, right? So it's very easy for me to come over here, and I guess it would have made more sense if I had done uh, top applications here. Um, but to understand what protocols or what applications were actually used to consume that traffic. So now I can see the course level of how much bandwidth was consumed, and then I can see the fine level to understand exactly what applications uh, were used to consume it. Now, everything here is hyperlinked. So if I click Keith PC, it actually takes me over to my Flow Monitor product where I can dig into all the relevant details about whatever Keith PC was doing in the last 30 minutes, right? He uh, had 54 megs of uh, secure web and 1.48 uh, megs of of uh, regular web and you know some some uh, Microsoft directory services and remote desktops, but it makes it very 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 easy for you to get very detailed to understand exactly how your wireless clients are consuming your bandwidth when you have What's Up Gold Premium Edition and the What's Up Gold Flow Monitor products together. Um, even with other network management products it is not possible to build a dashboard that can have wireless information, flow information, and information from any of the other areas of What's Up Gold uh, in that single pane of glass, right? So it's very easy for me to, to grab availability information, performance information, uh, wireless configuration information, all kinds of stuff, virtualization, and then show it in that single pane of glass. So going back to sum up what we've talked about today, effective wireless network management methodologies need to help you manage your wireless resource consumption, track your wireless clients, and secure your wireless clients from rogue devices. So the effective wireless management solution needs historical reporting to formulate wireless policies and capture performance trends. It is not just enough to have it in real time because invariably what happens is I'll get a call from the CEO who says, hey, Brian, last week, last Tuesday at 3 o'clock, the wireless network was slow or, or my laptop was slow. What, what up with that? And um, if I don't have a historical record, I'm not going to know, was it an oversubscription issue? Was it a signal strength issue? Was it a bandwidth consumption issue or something else? 
So we have to have historical reporting. We also need customizable dashboards so that you can simplify your wireless infrastructure and enable rapid visualization, isolation, and resolution of problems. You know, it's, uh, I, I tell you what, working at my last employer, having the ability to construct those dashboards on the fly for whatever problem I was trying to solve uh, is, is a unique strength of What's Up Gold and is certainly very useful. You know, yesterday I may work on signal strength problems, tomorrow I may be working on bandwidth problems. And so the needs of those dashboards are going to to be different. And so being able to, within a minute, I think you guys saw, I was able to build dashboards that showed me the relevant information uh, that I needed to, uh, to display. And then you need a network management system that can generate real-time alerts to address wireless problems before they impact you, your customers, and your business operations. Right? It's, um, it's not just enough if the system doesn't let you know when there is a problem. So with that, I will address one question that we had come across while I was uh, giving my presentation. Specifically, the question is, what devices need the flow monitor? Is it the wireless controllers or the wireless access points? So flow is not a wireless technology. It is actually a um, uh, uh, transport independent technology. It's simply, uh, and most routers and switches, um, uh, modern routers and switches, have the ability to generate NetFlow packets. So what you need to have is a NetFlow, JFlow, or S-Flow capable device that can source those NetFlow uh, packets uh, or flow information to What's Up Gold. And when you purchase the Flow Monitor product, we can receive that flow information and then represent it graphically in the reporting format that we just looked at. If you do not own a flow capable uh, piece of hardware, we also sell what's called Flow Publisher that allows you to um, run a software product on a PC and then attach that PC to what's called a spanning port or a mirror port on a switch and then that fl um, uh, flow publisher will generate the flow data just the same as um, uh, a high and routers and switches will as well. So that is not required just for wired networks. You can do it, or excuse me, for wireless networks. You can do it for wired networks too. It is a great way to investigate and understand not just how much bandwidth was consumed, but what was consuming the bandwidth. So one of the unique advantages to the What's Up Gold wireless infrastructure management contained in the premium edition is the fact that we're vendor neutral. Currently, we support Cisco AirNet and Cisco Airspace MIBs, as well as Aruba managed controllers. So what that means is if you have um, a Cisco device that is either a wireless LAN controller or an autonomous access point, all you need to do is find out if that particular model supports the Airspace, A-I-R-E-S-P-A-C-E, -E, or the Aeronet, A-I-R-O-N-E-T, MIPS. If it supports either one of those, you can use What's Up Gold uh, to manage, uh, monitor and manage your wireless uh, infrastructure, uh, just like in the demo you saw today. If you have Aruba wireless gear, if you have an Aruba wireless LAN controller, then you can also use What's Up Gold uh, to monitor and manage your wireless network. We will continue to add support for additional wireless vendors. Um, we are looking at uh, Ruckus, Motorola, Maru, several others. I, I can't commit to a schedule for delivery on those right now, but it is highest priority uh, for us to expand the wireless support. So if you like what you saw today, I encourage everybody to go to whatsupgold.com where you can get a 30-day free trial of What's Up Gold version 16 and see how the wireless infrastructure management can help your organization ensure that you have an optimal wireless system design, track your wireless clients, and secure your clients from rogue devices and receive alerts when there are problems in your wireless network. If anyone had questions that were not answered during this uh, presentation. We will, WebEx will email us a copy of those questions where we will be able to uh, receive and review them uh, offline. So once again, my name is Brian Jacobs, Senior Product Manager for the What's Up Gold family of network management products. With a sincere appreciation to everyone for joining our webinar today, we will be making it available uh, uh, all through our website to where you can record, uh, view the recording at any time at a later date. Thank you very much, and everyone enjoy the rest of your afternoon, evening, or night.